these fishermen may not know Codex Alimentarius, but they know that at the end of the day, this processing plant will buy what they catch. The workers in the plant may not know Codex Alimentarius, but they know they must follow strict sanitary standards and a lab constantly monitors their work. The owners of the plant may not know Codex Alimentarius, but they know they can export their fish anywhere in the world. And the shoppers in this supermarket may not know Codex Alimentarius, but they know this fish will be safe to eat. Codex Alimentarius, quite simply, is that invisible link in the food chain that helps provide income for rural fishermen, employment for factory workers, allows trade to flow freely and fairly among nations, and ensures safe, good food for consumers everywhere. Two thousand years ago, when this was a Roman seaport, Food and spices arrived from all over the world. Traders worried about delivering food before it's spoiled, but their knowledge about food safety was limited. Today, our global food supply chain is built upon modern agriculture and food processing. This has meant increased production, cheaper food, new products and markets, but also new problems. Food is a sensitive commodity, source of life and well-being, but also a potential threat, whether that threat stems from the use of new production methods or pathogens. The food must be safe. But how to ensure this globally without creating unnecessary barriers to trade? Codex Alimentarius has the answers. The Codex Alimentarius Commission, with its more than 20 specialist committees and task forces, takes action when there's a food safety concern or the need to harmonize standards for trade. Based on scientific advice from independent expert groups organized by FAO and WHO, the Commission decides the food standards, guidelines and codes of practice that form the Codex Alimentarius. Let's look, for example, at the Codex Standard for Oranges. It contains a complete description of the product, from colour, size and juice content, to defects which are allowed and those which are forbidden. The Codex covers much more than what the shopper sees in the market. Codex Standards are there in the field covering safe use of pesticides, as well as food additives and contaminants, hygiene, handling, packaging and ultimately labelling. Whether fresh or processed into juice, Codex standards make sure that it's good and it's safe. In an open global forum overseen by the Codex Alimentarius Commission, governments, industry, consumer groups and scientists debate complex issues to find a worldwide consensus. For example, in the global debate on the benefits and dangers of genetically modified foods, it was Codex that defined principles and guidelines for analysing the risk. In the past, when each country established its own food standards, the array of differing standards disrupted trade. Now, with Codex, standards are harmonised and trade flows freely and safely. More and more developing countries can take part in this process, in many cases assisted by the Codex Trust Fund, which offers financing and training to countries that need it. Being an active member of Codex helps developing countries compete in sophisticated world markets and improve food safety for their own people. At the same time, exporters know what importers demand and importers are protected from substandard shipments. It's a monumental job with a monumental impact. International food trade is a $200 billion a year industry, with millions of tons of food produced, marketed and transported. 
There's a lot at stake here for protecting consumers' health and ensuring fair practices in the food trade. For both, Codex is vital.